Um, so thank you, Soraya and Lorraine. I'm Gillian, manager of Procall UK. Um, and in this third session for today, I'm very happy to welcome Dominic Murphy and Pian Nunt. Um, yeah, as well as Terry and Twinkle. Um, Terry and Twinkle are citizen social scientists from the Prosperity in East London uh, Longitudinal Study. They'll be taking the seat with um, PA and Dom and we'll be putting questions to them about um, why citizen science um, is important in policy making. <coughs> Um, and the role and impact of citizen science in policy making. So just a quick introduction, Pierre was formerly head of insight and innovation at the London Borough of Barking and Dagenham, where he was a member of the London Prosperity Board um, and a sponsor of the citizen science program. Most recently, he set up an integrated insight policy and strategy team and an open data platform for Birmingham City Council. He is now CEO of Impera Analytics, which is a social purpose data analytics company that supports councils across the UK um, with quantitative and qualitative data analysis. Um, Dom is a regenerative, oh, sorry, an experienced regeneration and community engagement practitioner um, whose career has spanned running very local community projects in Bristol, uh, leading citywide programs and policy work with central government. Dom is now working for Camden Council as its principal policy and projects officer and is also serving as director of create, uh, creating excellence. Um, so Terry and Twinkle, you're much better at introducing yourself, so I pass the time to you. Hi, my name is Twinkle. I'm a citizen social scientist from Texas, in Newham. With my fellow citizen scientists, I have conducted research on how good life means in East London and also what are the barriers of prosperity that the local communities face. I've also uh, done citizen science research on what uh, inclusive innovative space looks like at East London and also I'm a proud mother of two kids. <laughs> Good morning, everyone. <clears throat> I'm Terry. I'm a social scientist from Custom House, NUAM, elected member of the Custom House Steering Group, Community Land Trust. And together with Twinkle, we conducted surveys of what prosperity means to the people of East London residents. I also run a mental health group support group called Talks Terry, which is encourages men to talk about their mental health and well-being. Right, so I'd like to kick off this session by asking you both what the impact has working with citizen social sciences add on the way your organisations gather evidence and make decisions that affect the local communities? I'll go first. So, um, obviously, in, in, um, and I'm going to talk about us and other organisations as well. So, the, the, the project that Siobhan was talking about in Houston um, is a really key point where, where a massive regeneration program is just kicking off. And the big question is, how will we judge its, its progress and how will all of the partners that are involved jointly judge their process and um, how they make decisions about what, you know, what they're going to do. And um, the, uh, the Citizen Social Science Programme, which is called Use the Voices, was, um, was our way of um, bringing their, the voice of residents, um, supported by UCL and others, into that, into that process, that key process of you know, what other things we're going to measure to, to decide whether or not we're successful and how are we going to have a set of measures that would be, um, that would be shared. So it's very important to us to not just have these measures, but for everyone to share them in what we call a shared, shared evidence base. So that, that, and just practically speaking, I think this result as well as with us, in fact, we've seen that very much as our, our, as our pilot. <coughs> we're now doing a good life canned project, which is all about us bringing those sorts of citizen voices into the decision making and planning of an entire borough. Um, it, at the Houston level, the Houston partnership have used that work to shape their um, their social value um, charter. So what are we going to measure when we're talking about whether or not we're delivering on our social value? All of those sorts of things. And, and then very locally, there are, there are local organisations that are also um, using some of the measures within there to, to judge their own performance. So I think it's early days, yeah, yeah but, but, but it's a good start. Yeah. Well, I, I think um, I'll ask from, from two perspectives, one from an individual one and one from a, from a system one. Um, as you very kindly mentioned, I, I, I've been the sponsor of the Business and Science Programme for some, for some time. And i um, very pleased to see Victoria and Regina and the, and the crowd who are our system scientists in the marketing deck. Um, and my point from an individual perspective is, uh, and at the risk of uh, kind of embarrassing her, uh, 
Regina joined the citizen science program as a researcher. And um, last year, she went from being a citizen science researcher to winning a local election. She's now in council. Um, okay, so <laughs> so, so who is a citizen science researcher? Your next step. <laughs> yeah, it's politics. Yeah. The next step is politics. Who'd have thought? Uh, Regina went from being one of my citizen science researchers to effectively being my boss in a space of about 10 weeks. So I think it's, it's evidently important that we take these principles into action and in how we, uh, how we contribute to the public service system. So that's my first answer. My second answer is, and I was reading your work, um, and there's something that was very profound, that you interviewed a lady who had lost her job in the last economic crisis in 2008. Um, and she is struggling to find work, she has mental health issues. So what has the economic system learned since the last financial crisis we are in the next one? The answer is nothing. The eco we are in, economic cycles are very predictable. So we typically have these recessions every 14 to 15 years. We are still supporting the lady from 2008 Sadly, there are going to be more of her in this next in this next one. So much yet. If we look at what caused the economic crisis of two thousand eight, is the collapse of myth of the financial institutions. So what did what did governments around the world do? Is to introduce legislation to prevent that from happening again. What has happened in the past two months? We've had four major banks collapse again. The assets under management of those four major banks have a higher total than the 120 banks that collapsed in 2008. I'll say that again. Four banks that have recently collapsed have more assets under management than the 120 banks that collapsed in 2008. So we are on the verge of even uh, an even greater economic recession. So if the, if the economic cycles are predictable, why didn't we prepare ourselves in the last 50 years? And so therefore, things like the citizen science is one of the few ways that we can understand how people's lives matter and different metrics matter than the, the way that the wider system behaves. Thank you. Um, I would like to ask open question to both of you. How can citizen science approach become a part of like, everyday practice for the local community? You, you need to hire more dogs. <laughs> I, I think. I think. I mean, one of the obvious things is the way that we've we've taken. Um, the idea that citizens can create the things we measure our performance with, the things we use when we we bring into our when we bring into our policy discussions with local authorities, that it showed us that, that, that it produces a really good product. It's a really good way of us understanding what what the issues are and what we need to address. So so there's one side is the confidence. It's a discipline. Citizen science is a discipline. It's not. Um, it's not just some, something that we, has been dreamed up. It's, it's something that we can have confidence in, and that growing the you know, people like Lynn Lease showing confidence in it. So you know, very big developers showing confidence in that sort of thing. So um, that's that's so that's we we can sort of bring it into our general work, but then also thinking about us as a group of people and as as an employer as well. We're, we're already looking at, uh, with uh, IGP, at developing um, a course, a placement. We, we might, might call it a, a, uh, an apprenticeship, but it's a way of recruiting people into our services, giving them citizen science skills and education so that they can then take that into their work. Um, and if by, by you know, they basically come in, learn about a service, start to learn about a service area, go off, learn about citizen science, and then bring that back in. And sort of 
almost like inoculates the, uh, the organization <laughs> in citizen science so uh, that we start to produce citizen science antibodies and fully um, <laughs> 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 able to operate in this difficult one. <laughs> Um, um, so let's look at the data. Um, so here's one example. If you look at any resident survey that local councils across up and down the country do, do, there are two questions that are almost one after the other. The first question is, um, do you like the place in which you live? And if you pick any resident survey, overwhelmingly, most residents and citizens, they respond positively to that. The next question is, uh, what do you think of your council? And overwhelmingly, people will respond negatively to that. Now, what is the number one reason for local authorities' existence? It's placemaking. So what explains this complete cognitive dissonance. Re residents can see they li you like the place in which you live, but you don't like the way the council is. That's a complete paradox. It's a complete paradox. If you respond positively to the first question, you should respond positively to the second question. So why does this cognitive dissonance exist? We live in a coexisting but paradoxical world. So that the reasons why these um, uh, ethnographic uh, research methods are so pertinent is because we have to unpick these paradoxes. And the reason why folks like DOM and other, increasingly the sector, the local government sector, is um, building public participation teams. I've just been doing one in, in Burma, for example. And building these lessons into those is to expose these paradoxes and understand how local authorities can close that gap. Because the measure of success on a, on a, on a resident perception survey should be, do you like the, the, the place in which you live? Yes. Do you like the council? I love it. <laughs> that is the measure of success. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, thank you everyone for uh, listening to all of us and thank you so much for the mini TED Talks, Dom and Pierre. Um, so now I'd like to pass the time to Henrietta who's going to chair the next session of today on citizen science, public and policy impacts of the role of universities on, in the 21st century. <laughs> Thank you.